After being paranoid about Albedo in 2.3 ending, I wanted to make a video to clear my head and maybe even your head regarding Albedo, Rindo Tear, Gold, yes I separated Gold and Rindo Tear, Alice, and Dane's Leaf, and put them together in a little series because having three Albedos in the Genshin universe makes me wonder whether or not MiHoYo faced Koi Dao three times to voice three different personalities, or did they? This is probably going to take about two or three parts, so consume them at your leisure. Seriously, this series that I decided to make is gonna hurt my head more than any other theory that I've made. Part 1 is going to include the following chapters. Albedo's backstory, Rindo Tear, which has a subcategory on Rindo Tear's creations, their classifications and individual attachment, chapter 2 which focuses on Albedo and Rindo Tear, chapter 3 being about Albedo's current situation, and chapter 4 are Alice, Ryan, and Dainsleaf, and their relation to Rindo Tear and Albedo. So without further ado, here's part 1. Albedo is a homunculus made by Rindo Tear who was recently uncovered to be the great sinner alchemist Gold. Rindo Tear is her actual name and Gold was her given title. Now Gold or Rindo Tear, whichever you prefer, is a master practitioner of Chemia, which is only one of the many forms of alchemy known to Teyvat. And this particular form of alchemy originated from and was used to sustain the underground world of Hanria. During the time Rindo Tear was still in service, Rindo Tear was under the rule of the Eclipse Dynasty or what was once known as the Black Sun Dynasty. So far, there are no known members of its lineage or royal family. They do however have a royal guards platoon for defending the kingdom. And one of the members we have already met is named Dainsleaf, the Twilight Sword, who is now the self-proclaimed prophet we talk to today. To our current knowledge, Dainsleaf knows both Albedo and Gold, but I'm not too sure if he knows Rindo Tear personally, nor does he mention anything about Gold's real name, Rindo Tear, either. What he does mention are the words Chalk pursues Gold and points out that Albedo is treading on a very thin line by studying Chemia and following in Gold's footsteps. Prior to Albedo himself, Rindo Tear was responsible for the following things. Getting the name and title, Great Sinner Gold, for creating an army of shadowy monsters that followed the fall of Canria's Eclipse dynasty. These shadowy monsters she named with soil types for the purpose of classifying her creation. The Rift Hounds and Whelps and even the Golden Wolf Lord, which she all classifies under the name Alpesol, meaning leached basic soil or slightly acid soils. And interestingly, she specifically called them unintentional creations. Next are Rindo Tear's masterpieces, which are very different from the shadowy monsters that are called unintentional creations. Even though she was responsible for the shadowy army, she didn't give them much apart from a name and classification, compared to the one unlikely masterpiece and the two other masterpieces that she Somewhat interacts with regularly. Durin, who was probably the first she created, was a skeletal dragon that dwarfs over the tallest mountains. She gave Durin the classification of hummus, meaning decaying soil, for his decaying aesthetic, disfigured skeletal form, veiny wings, and red eyes. Pretty much a dead dragon. I also want to add that the wolves of Althesol are nothing compared to Durin called hummus, as stated in one of the concealed claws. The story of Durin is a sad tale of a gentle caring dragon that only wanted to be friends. And when Conria fell, Rindo Tear told it to go out to see the world and display its beauty. Unfortunately, he was apparently unaware of his attack on Mondstadt and was under a sort of sleeping spell or a spell that made him unconscious of what he was doing. After Durin finally woke, he was already falling from the sky and into Dragon Spine by the hands of Dvalin and Barbados. However, in his dying breath, he wished that they had met under different circumstances circumstances as friends instead of enemies and didn't have any ill will against any of them even after the battle. But little did he know that there was a will within him and was waiting until the perfect moment. Rindo Tear was pursuing to create an artificial human and her first creation sadly, the primordial albedo being the first iteration of her primordial human project, was imperfect and was discarded into Durin's stomach. No name was given to this first creation, only that it was inside the hummus, which is Durin, now laying dead in the snow. With its heart still beating, the failed artificial human came into fruition later as Primordial Albedo. Now there isn't a mention of Primordial Albedo being a masterpiece either, but the fact that it was one of her technological breakthroughs, despite being a late bloomer, makes it a notable creation in its own right. Lastly, the perfect Albedo, which we know as the chief alchemist of the Knights of Pavonius. After creation, Rindo Tear gives him the title Clyde Prince, meaning Chalk Prince, as well as classifying him with the name of Cretaceous, deriving from the Latin word Creta, meaning chalk. 
which moves albedo above all her previous creations, being labeled after a rock instead of soil. This is also the highest form of creation that Rindo Tear achieved so far that we know of. So, after creating Albedo, there wasn't much lore or context, other than when Albedo came to after creation, he was already adventuring with Rindo Tear, and one of their adventures led them to something called the Heart of Numberius. The following day, Rindo Tear disappeared and left a note telling him to find the truths and meanings of Tebet. Along with that, she also left a set of papers and manuscripts containing the last remaining guides to the alchemical process known as Opus Magnum. Opus Magnum or Magnum Opus, meaning great work, is basically a term for the whole process to create the Philosopher's Stone. This next part is a bit of speculation because of Albedo's current problem and situation, so I'll solve this up a bit because I will only provide minor clarifications and minor theories. So here's where multiple theories point to the end result of Albedo becoming Rubido or fulfilling the Opus Magnum in Rindo Tears stead. Because the name Albedo or Albedo is one of three entry stages of the Magnum Opus. And Albedo is the second entry stage meaning whiteness and confronts the primordial Albedo which I am going to call Nigredo or Nigredo meaning decomposition. Hence being fed to Durin, decomposing after Durin's death and coming into fruition later. Albedo and Nigredo confronting each other is a phase called a blue show which is the removal of impurities. This is done to bring light and clarity to the prima materia which is the first matter. And first matter basically means the basest form of all matter, which we can call chaos. But we don't know how that ended. Hence the ending in 2.3, which leads me to the new process of coincidentia oppositorum, meaning the unity of opposites, which is a phase before moving to Rubido, meaning that Albedo now faces two opposing principles, Albedo's own principle and primordial Negredo's principle, which is wanting to replace him. And us not knowing the result of that is where the feeling that evil Albedo is who we're talking to and sussing him out like crazy comes from. So far, there's been two sides to the result of this opposing dilemma. One side says that primordial Nigredo killed and replaced the real Albedo, and the other being that the real Albedo struck a deal with Nigredo and became Joseph instead. One or the other, you can choose which one you wish. I won't go into any more speculation because it will mess up the whole point of this video, so I'll save the more head-aching details for the next episode. But that's basically a short dip on what's been happening to Albedo currently. Back on track, Albedo is also in the care of Alice, who for some reason is a friend of Rindo Tear, and simply calls her by the name Rhyme, despite what she did as gold. Alice then lets her into the Knights of Favonius to become an alchemist, as well as being a bit of a caretaker slash semi-sibling for Klee. Interestingly enough, Alice is a member of what's called the Hexen Circle, meaning the coven-lit circle of witches, with the main goal of conducting Ermensul explorations and formal tea party gatherings. Ermensul is the white tree within domains that stretch into the deeps of the abyss. And the explorations basically mean that they are dungeon hunters who travel all over Teyvat to find them. As to whether or not Dane's Leaf is aware of Rhine, it's possible but we're not entirely sure. Or even Alice knowing Rhine but not her title Gold. We only know that Dane's Leaf knows Gold and most likely Alice too. But it does seem that Alice knows Dane's Leaf to some extent. The description in Aloy's collected miscellany, which is also signed by Alice herself, has Alice calling Dane's Leaf an old rigid man. So I guess we can count that as a pass. We can only guess that Rhine is also a member of Hex and Zirkle, because Albedo's lore dictates that they go on adventures and explore dungeons together, with the latest exploration prior to her disappearance revealing that they have found the Heart of Noberius. Right now, the Heart of Noberius has little info within Genshin Impact's lore, but the name Noberius is also the same as the Greek name Cerberus. But Noberius specifically is depicted as either a dog or a raven with three heads. Oddly enough, Noberius is also able to restore the dignities and honors of mortals, which could be the reason for Ryan's disappearance considering her not-so-recent Great Sinner Gold incident. And that's going to be everything important and need to know about Albedo, Ryan, Alice, and Dainsleaf outside of the theoretical spectrum. Although I added the theories at the end, I only did so to keep the gaps and plot holes within the video from forming. And with that, I'll be ending part 1 here. The next video is going to focus more on Rindo Tear's motives and what she exactly wants. I'll also be making a video on Alice and the Hexen Circle, Dainsleaf the self-proclaimed prophet, and lastly a rendition of Albedo's magnum opus. With that, I'll leave the rest of the speculation to you guys for the time being. 
But before I go, I just want to plug my Twitter and my Facebook page where I also post the videos as well as a few memes here and there. I don't really do much apart from post memes every now and again and tweet, but giving it a follow also helps. As always, click the like button and subscribe as well as hit the bell icon if you want to see episode 2 of this mini-series. That's gonna be it for this video. I'll see you guys later. Bye!